Welcome back students to our Chemistry 1510 video notes. In this video we're talking about chemical equations. So we've discussed chemical equations before, we've seen them in chemical reactions, and now what we need to do is start putting the math behind them. So we need to start off with a balanced chemical equation, and when we look at a balanced chemical equation, there's actually three ways to interpret this. So one of the ways is to interpret as if we were talking about just kind of singular molecules. If we're talking about a molecular equation, then this one right here would read as one molecule of N2 reacts with three molecules of H2 to form two molecules of ammonia. So that would be how we would interpret this equation if we were on the molecular level. If we take this whole equation and we multiply it by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, then we're at the molar level in which we say one mole of N2 reacts with three moles of H2 to form two moles of ammonia. So this is going to be the way that we most commonly are going to be interpreting chemical equations in the future. The way that you've already seen is the mass way, which relates to law of conservation of mass. So in our law of conservation of mass, we say that 28 grams of N2 combines or reacts with 6 grams of N2 to form 34 grams of NH3. So this is using the law of conservation of mass, saying that the mass of everything on this side needs to equal the mass of everything on this side. So let's start looking at the molar form of our chemical reactions and start considering those coefficients. So let's look at the same reaction. And as we start to consider the same reaction that we saw above, I want to pull out what we're going to call conversion factors. So conversion factors are going to be based off of the coefficients that are part of your balanced yeah. chemical equation, where if there's no number written, you're assuming a number one. So what we can do is we can pull out these coefficients and start to make relationships between them. And so these relationships are called stoichiometric relationships because what we're doing right now is called stoichiometry. So we can say things like for every one mole of N2, we end up needing three moles of H2. We can flip this one so that the three moles of H2 are on the top and the one mole of N2 is on the bottom. We don't have to go between the two reactants. We can also go between a reactant and a product. So we can say that we need one mole of N2 to form two moles of ammonia and H3. We can flip this one as well. Then we could choose the other reactant and we could start at three moles of H2 are needed to form two moles of NH3. And this one can also be flipped. So we can get a whole bunch of conversion factors from one balanced chemical equation. And so what we need to be able to do is figure out what conversion factor do we need to solve the problem at hand. So let's do a little bit of practice with that. So here's a new question. 
How many moles of nitrogen gas are combined with 8.60 moles of oxygen gas to make dinitrogen pentoxide? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going between moles of two different components. We're going to be going between moles of oxygen and moles of dinitrogen pentoxide. First, if you don't have a chemical equation, you have to balance it. And so, wait, I think I made a mistake. All right, so sorry about that. I did make a mistake because I was too worried that you could hear my daughter loudly counting in the background and I didn't read the question. So it says how many moles of nitrogen gas are combined. So we're going between oxygen and nitrogen here. So if you don't have a chemical equation, you want to make one and balance it. So from here, they're telling you that nitrogen plus oxygen makes dinitrogen pentoxide. Wow, I made two mistakes. Okay, so why don't you pause for a moment and see if you can balance this and then come back and we'll talk about it. So go ahead and hit pause. So this one might have given you some trouble because a lot of times what ends up happening when you see a odd number uh, versus an even number, so you have an odd number of oxygens on the product side, you have an even number of oxygens on the reactant side, those ones always give people trouble. So what I suggest is to start with the lowest common multiple between two and five, which is 10. So we need 10 oxygens on both sides. The way to get 10 oxygens over here is to put a two coefficient out in front, and the way to get 10 oxygens over here is to put a five out in front. If we didn't do this, we would have ended up with a two and a half where I have this five, and you can't do that in balancing. Your balancing needs to be whole numbers. So now that we have put a two out in front of dinitrogen uh, pentoxide, we have disrupted the number of nitrogens and that we um, had two to start with and then we ended up taking this two and it gets distributed to these other numbers, these um, subscripts. So then we had four nitrogens on the product side, which means that we had to put a two here to make sure that we have four on the reactant side. So now let's write out the stoichiometric relationship between nitrogen and oxygen. There's two ways to write it. Remember, you could have the two moles of nitrogen on the top and the five moles of oxygen on the bottom, or we can flip this and have the five moles of oxygen on the top and the two moles of nitrogen on the bottom. Remember what I'm doing here is I'm taking the coefficients from my balanced chemical equation and I'm using them to relate how much of one compound is needed uh, in to, uh, let's see, during the course of a chemical reaction. So this one, the original question asks, if you start with 8.60 moles of O2, how much nitrogen do you need? So I need to pick either this coefficient, I'm not, sorry, not coefficient, um, relationship or this relationship and put it here where I've drawn my yellow box. And what I need to do is I need to look at what the unit is on the term beforehand. That term is moles of oxygen, which means we want moles of oxygen down here so that it cancels. So we are going to use this first term because it ends up canceling the units that we want, which is moles of oxygen, and we end up with moles of nitrogen. So if you go ahead, you put that in your calculator, you should get 3.44 moles of nitrogen. So when we do these kinds of um, calculations, this one is actually very basic because most of the time we are doing these types of calculations with grams. So I'm going to... Um, give you an opportunity to do this question here 
um, go ahead and pause. I'm just going to write out the answer while we're pausing so that you can come back and look at it because this one isn't what I want to spend our time on. So I'm going to pause, write out an answer, and then you can look at it and then we'll move on. All right, so here we are coming back from a pause. If you struggled to get the right answer on this one, you might have not put your hydrogen and chlorine as diatomic. Um, or you might have lost your significant figures here. So those are the typical areas where students struggle. So what I wanna do is go to a more typical yet complex example. So most of the time we start our calculations with grams instead of moles. So let's think about why that is. Moles are kind of uh, like a, a counting number, right? Like how we have a dozen. So moles are just telling you how many atoms you have um, in that sample or how many molecules you have in that sample. That becomes important because in our molar ratio, what we are seeing is a numerical quantity where we say one mole of nitrogen reacts with however many moles of this other thing. So we need those numerical values. So moles are very important and we need to convert to them partway through the calculation, but we always start our calculations with grams. And the reason for that is because when you go into real life, your balances in lab gives grams. So our little pathway that we use to figure out um, what to do is going from mass to moles and then from moles to moles and then back to mass again. If we look back at our original problems a couple of moments ago, we were doing this middle section as the kind of introduction to this process. So. Now what we're going to do is add a section on the front end and the back end of the middle section that we just completed. So here's a typical question. How many grams of chlorine gas combines with 24.4 grams of carbon to make carbon tetrachloride according to the following equation? So first of all, because this isn't balanced, this chemical equation, you wanna start by balancing it. So we'll put a two here, and you can choose to put in the ones, or if you leave them blank, um, you know, I assume that you mean a one there. And what we will do is we will start with what we're given, which is the 24.4 grams of carbon. And we wanna go from grams of carbon to moles of carbon, because in here, our A is carbon and our chlorine is B. So in order to go from mass to moles, we use the molar mass. The molar mass from carbon is on the periodic table. It's one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams of carbon. I put my 12.01 grams of carbon on the bottom so that my units of grams will end up canceling. Now that I'm in moles of carbon, I'm ready for this middle part going from moles of one component to moles of another. For this, I'm going to use my balanced chemical equation and I'm gonna pull out the ratio that I need. The ratio that I need is going from carbon to chlorine. So for every one mole of carbon, I need two moles of chlorine. Again, my moles of carbon have canceled I'm in units of moles of chlorine. Now the question asked for grams of chlorine. So in order for me to go from moles to grams, I need to use the molar mass. One mole of chlorine is going to be 70.90 grams of chlorine. If you wrote 35.45, you were failing to double the chlorine, which is indeed diatomic. So your moles of chlorine cancel you are left with just the unit of grams of chlorine. You put this in your calculator and you get 288 grams of chlorine. So this is the typical problem that you will see, 
where in other problems, you could be going from grams of carbon to grams of carbon tetrachloride. You could be going from grams of chlorine to carbon tetrachloride. So you can convert between any of these compounds in a balanced chemical equation. So don't get stuck thinking that there's only one way to convert. That's actually what makes stoichiometry so hard. So uh, I think that is going to be it for this video. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.